Today we're looking at President Millard Fillmore. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com where you'll find more resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. Millard Fillmore was the 13th President of the United States from 1850 to 1853 and was a member of the Whig Party. Actually, Fillmore would be the final Whig President in the White House as the Whig Party dissolved just a few years later. Fillmore was born January 7, 1800 near Morovia, New York in the Finger Lakes region. He was one of eight children born to Phoebe Millard and Nathaniel Fillmore. His family grew up very poor, moving from rented farm to rented farm in the north central area of New York. Millard had very little formal education, but did learn to read and write, and he became an avid reader, reading any book he could get his hands on. He apprenticed as a cloth maker, but did not enjoy the work, and then by the age of 19, served as a law clerk until his father purchased a farm near Buffalo, New York in 1821. Millard began to study law to become an attorney, and in 1823 he established a law office in East Aurora, New York, near Buffalo. A few years later, in 1826, he married Abigail Powers, and together they would have two children. In 1829, Fillmore became involved in politics and was elected to the New York State Assembly in Albany. He served for three years there and was adamantly opposed to then-President Andrew Jackson's policies. At the same time, his law practice was rapidly growing and he relocated it to Buffalo, which was just a small village but was expanding quickly as it was located at the western end of the recently completed Erie Canal. In 1832, he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, in which he would serve until 1842. During his time in the House, he became one of the most influential congressmen in Washington, and for two years served as chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, which is an extremely powerful committee in Congress that has the authority over all taxes and other revenue-raising measures that the government takes on. In 1843, Fillmore left politics and returned to Buffalo to practice law. Many in the Whig Party were upset and urged Fillmore to return to politics and run for vice president with Henry Clay in 1844. Fillmore, however, did not run, but instead waited a few years and ran for Comptroller of New York, which a Comptroller is an elected official that oversees the finances of a state or government. Shortly after, Democratic President James Polk announced he would not be running for re-election in 1846. The Whig Party quickly nominated Mexican-American war hero General Zachary Taylor to be their nominee for president. The Whig Party felt they needed a vice presidential nominee that would garner New York votes and a candidate that had a lenient stance on slavery, which Fillmore did. The election of 1848 was close, and New York's electoral votes were crucial in securing a win for Taylor. Fillmore was sworn in as Vice President of the United States on March 5, 1849. Being Vice President, Fillmore oversaw much of the debate in the Senate as California applied for statehood and the Compromise of 1850 was discussed. In July of 1850, President Zachary Taylor unexpectedly died, and on July 10, 1850, Millard Fillmore was sworn in as the 13th President of the United States. Immediately, Fillmore was at the center of the compromise debate, as any bill passed in Congress would have to have his approval to become law. Unlike Zachary Taylor, Fillmore was much more open to compromise and not as adamantly against the spread of slavery west. Soon, California was admitted as a free state, and Fillmore signed into law the controversial Fugitive Slave Act, which required Northerners to aid in the capture of escaped enslaved people and made it illegal to aid enslaved people in their escape. Fillmore and others believed this act would settle the slavery issue, but it only served to greater divide the nation and led to resistance to Fillmore being nominated to run for a second term. Instead, the Whig Party nominated another war hero, General Winfield Scott, who was defeated by Democrat Franklin Pierce. 
Interestingly, Fillmore would be the first president to return to private life without a sizable fortune to basically retire on, so Fillmore planned to go back to his law practice. Unfortunately, tragedy soon struck Fillmore. His wife Abigail caught a cold at President Pierce's inauguration, which developed into pneumonia, and she died March 30th of 1853. Then his daughter Mary died of cholera the following year in 1854. Fillmore refused to join the new Republican Party upon the dissolving of the Whig Party, and then in 1856 accepted the nomination for president from the Know Nothing or American Party. As the nation descended into civil war, Fillmore opposed Abraham Lincoln's policies and criticized him for his handling of the war, and then after the war, uh, Fillmore supported Andrew Johnson's reconstruction plans. In February of 1874, Fillmore suffered a stroke and then died on March 8th of 1874 at the age of 74. So with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.